In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to the quadratic formula. So to begin with here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give the result for the quadratic formula. So let's just say we've got a general quadratic. So we've got ax squared plus bx plus c, and this all equal to zero. What we want to do here is solve this quadratic. So the quadratic formula, we use this when we can't factorize the quadratic that we're trying to solve. Okay. So the result here, our solutions are given as x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is all divided here by 2a. Okay. So notice here a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x, and c is final term here at the very end of the quadratic. Okay. So, like I said, this just gives us another method here to use for solving quadratics. Now, for your typical kind of exam style question, it won't tell you to, you know, use the quadratic formula, but it will give you a clue. Okay, so you might be asked to solve a quadratic, and you'll know that you need to use the quadratic formula, for example, because it will say, give your solutions to, say, two decimal places. Okay. If we could factorize that quadratic, obviously our solutions would be integers. But in that case, then, you know, we wouldn't need to give the solution to two decimal places. So if you see anything about two decimal places, you know, straight away that you need to use the quadratic formula. So like I said, this is the result here. So this here is the quadratic formula. Okay, so just do make a note of this here. This is our quadratic formula. This is a result that you just need to learn, uh, make sure that you're confident in using it. What we're going to do now is just take a look at some practice questions here for using the quadratic formula. Starting off with question one here, then we're asked to solve x squared minus 3x plus 1 is equal to 0. We want to give our answers to two decimal places. So straight away, because I see this line here at the very end where it says give your answers to two decimal places, this would suggest that we can solve this quadratic equation here by factorizing, but that we need to use the quadratic formula solve it. So to begin with, let's just recall the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is all over 2a. So what we need to do here to begin with is just note the value of a, b and c from this quadratic equation here. So a, remember that's just the coefficient of x squared. We don't write anything here, but that is simply a 1. So a is equal to 1. b is the coefficient of x, that would be minus 3. Do include the minus here. So minus 3. And then finally c here, that would just simply be 1. So we've got a, we've got b, and we've got c. What we need to do now is just substitute into the quadratic formula here. In that case, then x is going to be equal to minus b. That would be minus minus 3. I'll write everything out in full. So minus minus 3 plus or minus the square root here. So b squared, so that's minus 3 squared. Minus, so what I do now for this 4ac here is I put all of this into a bracket. So minus 4 times a, which is 1, times up by c, which is also 1. And we divide all of this here by 2a. That's going to be 2 times 1. So let's start simplifying here. Minus minus 3. If you've got a negative number, you can times it by a minus here. This minus would be minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 3, that would give you positive 3. So we get 3 plus or minus the square root here. Minus 3 squared, so that would be 9. Minus 4 times 1 times 1, so that's going to be 4. So I get 9 minus 4. We divide all of this here by 2 times 1, which would simply be 2 there. So again, we just simplify one more time here. I get 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 4, so that's going to give me the square root of 5. We divide all of this here by 2. So the only thing left to do now 
is take this final bit here and just simply put it into our calculator. So we get two solutions here. I get one solution when I add this part here on top, so it would be 3 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And then my other solution here would be 3 minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So if I take my first solution here as being 3 minus the square root of 5, divide that by 2. Remember, do round your solution to two decimal places. What you should get here then is x equals 0 0.38. That's the two decimal places. Two decimal places. And then my other solution here, again, x equals, this will be when we do 3 plus the square root of 5 divided by 2. Again, just put that into your calculator. Just make sure that you round it correctly to two decimal places. And what you should get here is 2.62. Okay, and again, that's to two decimal places. So just note that here. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question one. So to finish with here, we just take a look at one more question. We're asked to solve x squared plus 2x minus 7 equals 0. And this time we're asked to give our answers in the form a plus or minus b root c. So this time here, because we're asked to give our answers in this form, this is what we call exact form, this would again suggest that we need to use the quadratic formula. So to begin with, let's just recall the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And this is all over 2a. So again, just to begin with here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to denote the value of a. Remember, a is the coefficient of x squared. So again, that would just be 1 in this case. We denote the value of b here. That's the coefficient of x. That's going to be positive 2. And then c here, that's just going to be minus 7. Again, do we include the minus. So minus 7 there for c. We've got a, we've got b, and we've got c. So all we need to do now is just substitute a, b, and c into our formula here. Or basically our quadratic formula. Okay, so let's not overcomplicate it. If we just substitute a, b, and c into our formula here. What we're going to get then is x is equal to minus b. That's going to be minus 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be 2 squared. Minus now again for the 4ac. Just put this in a bracket. I've got 4 times that by a which is 1. So 4 times 1. And then times this by c here which is minus 7. We divide all of this here by 2a, so that's 2 times 1, giving me 2 there. If we just simplify it as we go here, I've got minus 2. Plus or minus, so for the square root here, then we've got 2 squared, which is 4, so I've got 4 here at the beginning. Now in this bracket, we've got 4 times 1, which is 4, times it by minus 7, so that would give me minus 28. So what I've got here is 4. Minus minus 28, so that's the same as 4 plus 28. We divide all of this here by 2. So we simplify the third here now. We've got minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 32, and again, it's all divided by 2. Now, what you might notice here for the solution that we're expected to get, it's in the form a plus or minus b root c. So we shouldn't get any denominator here, like we'd expect. Um, so we've also got b root c as well. We're at this point here, we simply got the square root of a number, got the square root of 32. So we need to simplify this third here as well. So root 32, well, I can simplify this here by writing this as a product of two thirds, but one of those thirds will be a, uh, a square number. So I could write this as root 16 root 2. And root 16 is equal to 4. That's going to give me 4 root 2 there. Okay. So what I've got here then is minus 2 plus or minus 4 root 2. Like we said, we can write the square root of 32 as 4 root 2. That's 4 root 2. 
we divide all this here by two. So to finish with then, all I need to do here is just divide through by two. So minus two divided by two, that would give me minus one. We've still got the plus or minus, and then four root two divided by two, that would give us two root two there. Okay, and there we have it, so that's our solution. Normally what this question would say is A, B, and C are integers to be found. Um, it might sometimes say constants, but basically it just signals that, um, you know, you should get a bit of a clue there to what you should expect for your solution. So for A then, that would be minus 1. B here, that would be 2. And C would also be 2 as well. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution to question 2. That brings the end of this video on an introduction to the quadratic formula. In the next video, we're going to take a look at exam revision for the quadratic formula.